Coach Billy Hahn, court side with Billy Hahn. Uh, this is our second show for the season, and it's pretty crazy, but the last time I did it, last a couple weeks ago, I did it on purpose because I was going to help out the Morgantown High School classic they had at their high school with the teams coming in. That's wanted to promote that a little bit. And now it's funny, but it's almost like another high school night, and I'm gonna talk about the, the Mountaineers as well. But uh, tomorrow night at Morgantown High School at 7.30, University High plays Morgantown, which is the obviously the crosstown rivals, and two very, very good high school teams, not only in Morgantown, but in the state of West Virginia. Uh, I would not be surprised, in my mind, if both of those teams, only, but only one team could go to the state, the state no. tournament, right? We can both go. Can you both go? This is, uh, and I'm going to introduce my guest here in a second, but I would not be surprised if both teams are in the state. They are both very talented teams, and they're very good teams in different ways. Uh, there's a little, I think there's a big contrast in both teams, how both teams play, uh, both teams' philosophy a little bit. So that'll be shown tomorrow night at Morgantown High School. Uh, tip off about 7.30, right? Yep. My first guest is Coach Dave Tallman, head basketball coach at Morgantown High School. I'm back. He can't do any better. He's got to bring me back every time. He, uh, just so you understand something, so you don't get, a, get right. a, a bigger head than you already have. Yeah. It's not because of your looks. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right? Just so you know. I got you. Got me? Yeah. It's I appreciate really, it. It's sort of because I do like you. Yeah. And my wife likes you. I think that's a good thing. We see your family at Mass. That's right. Most Sundays. You go to Holy Day? We go to Holy Day? No, oh, okay. I prayed for you. You're they right. Did. Yeah, you're good. I love them, man. <laughs> so tonight, before we start talking about the game tomorrow night, I know you're a basketball junkie. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk a little bit of Mountaineer basketball. Let's do it. Before we get started. With Sounds the high good. Yep. I went to practice today. Saw the Mountaineers again. And Bob Huggins today was going absolutely berserk. Crazy. And he made some comments through the three hours that I was there about his team, about what's going on, how he's trying to get those guys to play his way and what he expects. And he's really having a hard time getting it across there, all those guys. And he's a frustrated man right now. I told him when he came over today, you'll love this one. I said, Coach, I said, you're going crazy, aren't you? He goes, Billy, you have no idea how crazy I'm going. He said, these guys are driving me absolute nuts. And I said, Hugs, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. And he says, yes, you would. Every time I go to the bank, <laughs> yeah. you'd like to be in my shoes. No <laughs> doubt. He hasn't lost his sense of humor. So they're flying as we speak. They're in the air right now. They actually cut me off on did, the way did, here. Did they cut you off? Yeah. How come I can't get an escort out here? Oh, really? Yeah, they're, they had a police escort. I had to get out of the is, way. Is that right? Yeah. So they're flying. So right what now. happens when they're 2-0 and in the Big 12? You get two cop cars that take them? Yeah, they should have, yeah, they should have a, a, a double escort. There you go. They could be. They could. They could be. Did you see their game? I watched both. I've watched every game. Did you? I mean, 
They're getting better. I mean, people. This is crazy. They here, are getting better. If you look at where they were at two weeks ago compared to now, it just shows how much of a genius he is. I mean, the, he's made adjustments defensively. He's made adjustments to the lineup. Continues to hold guys accountable. And uh, the, the guys aren't going to win. He's going to win, you know, when it comes to playing hard and, and, and those things. I think, and you can tell me, you know a little bit more about it than I do, but be nice if some of the older guys would step up a little bit. I mean, I think the young guys are, their heads are spinning. They're, they're new to it. They're a little uh, nervous when they're out there. They don't want to screw up because they know they're going to have a short leash. But, you know, I think if uh, the guys had been around a little bit, if they'd show some leadership, it'd be a lot better. As long as you've coached, in the 40 years that I've coached, I think about leaders that, that I was associated with during my career. Each leader that I had, it seemed like that leader was generally a senior. For the most All part, right? yeah. For the most part. I'm thinking about our seniors that we have this year. We got one senior. Yeah. And that senior is Issa Ma. Mm -hmm. Now, as a coach, you I think you'll agree with me on this. Issa Ma, in my mind, doesn't have the personality. It's not not built like a built and made up like a leader. Mm -hmm. He's not spunky. He doesn't carry a lot of energy. Doesn't have a lot of body energy, positive body energy. So that, in my mind, that automatically eliminates him from being a leader. So Which who, do you hurt. Go to, who do you go to next? Well, that hurts because if your senior doesn't bring enthusiasm, then the younger guys see that. No doubt about it. Right? So the, <clears throat> it's hard. And I mean, my dad's coached forever, and he always says if the coach wants it more than the players, it's not going to be a good year. And I think right now there's no question that the coaching staff wants it more than the team. Although they're 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 getting better, you know. They have improved. But they need to get a couple wins. Uh, oh, they need this, this week. This week, this week for the Mountaineers is absolutely critical. You could take that to the bank. I'm telling you right now, we better win two this week. Start tomorrow night. At Kansas State, which we got some advantages there. Kansas State's not near as good as they have been in the past, especially last year. They've lost their best player in, in uh, Wade. What's his first name? Yeah. I can't, I can't, yeah. But anyway, he's out for not playing our game. That's a positive. Second thing is, their students, believe it or not, are still not back from their break for Christmas, and that helps out there. Oh, they're nuts. Oh, yeah. I got them. Did you do that schedule? I got Kansas State as the second hardest place mm -hmm. to play in the Big 12. Behind, I go Kansas, Kansas State, West Virginia. No, and I, Iowa State for a damn time. Mm -hmm. Iowa State, so no students there. They lose. Wade's not playing their big guy who can play. It's gonna be, was the selected preseason first team Big Twelve, so they're not, they're missing him. Hugs is gonna go in there and mess it up just a little bit to make it real choppy and ugly. Texas Tech game. This is amazing. I'll tell everybody this. Hugs, I went to the, the practice the day before the Texas Tech game. Then I went to the shoot around of the Texas Tech game the day of the game. And I said, Hugs, you got something up your sleeve. I know you I know you got something up your sleeve. I said, Billy? 
I'm going to show them something they've never seen before. So I'm watching the game. In the second half, all of a sudden, the commentators on TV go, is that triangle on two? It took them a minute. <laughs> is that box on one? Yeah. They didn't know what was going on. Hugs had it so disguised. And it was so good that I'm not even going to tell you what it was. Mm -hmm. But it's something pretty good. Yep. So Texas Tech had no idea. So now he goes to Texas. And we lose to Texas on Saturday. And play them, play them like crazy. So in Virginia. We, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, we're yeah. Out of nowhere. Now we're Zone Virginia, aren't we? Yeah. Hey, let's make shirts. Yeah, Zone Virginia. Why don't you sell them here? Well, at let your me show. just tell you something. Press Virginia. Yeah, not for a couple of years. You might as well take Press Virginia, and take those T-shirts, and they'll become an antique. An antique T-shirt. See Lamar. Who? Lamar. Boy, Lamar. Yo, dog. What's up, Lamar? Would you sneak in on me? Lamar. Lamar. Would you sneak in here on me? Yeah. How you doing, dog? Got now, some of the Morgantown High School players here. Hey, we were talking about crab cakes, right? I yeah. lived in Maryland for ten years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> crab cake. He grew up in in Maryland. You got one this weekend? Crab cakes here at the Green Turtle. D delicious. Are very good. No filling. Crabby melt, crabby dip. No filling. Pure crab meat. Right? Straight from Maryland. So you do those, uh, you do the the, uh, the crabs in Maryland where you, you, you got to pick them and, oh, man. Eat, oh, those are good, aren't they? Oh, I love that, man. That's why I go back a few times a year. Yeah, but. You don't drink yours with lemonade, do you? Oh, yeah. You use lemonade? Next, next, let's go. I got you. <laughs> 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 All right. So they go to Texas. Not only does he continue to search for his own, but he ends up playing Texas 2-3 zone. Yep. Which he sort of matches up out of it. I wonder when the last time he played a 2-3 oh zone. Oh, my gosh. Walsh College? Yeah, it's been a while. It's Long been a time. It's been a while. That's the, what Huggy Bear is doing right now is part of the reason he's driving him crazy. Yeah. Because he can't, he can't do what he wants to do. But he knows he has to change if he wants to win. Well, he's coaching. He hasn't stopped coaching. Hugs, 40 years I've been around. Coached with Gary Williams in Maryland for 12 years. Gary's in the Hall of Fame. I was with Jack Kraft, Rhode Island University. He's in the Hall of Fame. I've been with some great coaches. Bob Huggins. Of all the guys I work for, Bob Huggins is the number one coach that absolutely hates to lose. Mm -hmm. More than any other, any other coach I've been around. And we all hate to lose. Yeah. He gets whacked. Whacked. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with Huggs, Huggy Bear. He's uh, been good to you, right? He's been very good to me. I met him whew, how many years ago now? Ten, ten, eight to ten years ago when um, David Kiefer was on my staff at St. Mary's Riken. Um, David was his head manager at Cincinnati and then went to Kansas State with him. And uh, Hugs and David's dad are uh, best friends, so kind of met through that. And then kind of whenever he got the West Virginia job, they had already signed John Flowers, who played for me uh, at St. Mary's Reich. That's right. So then we had that. It just kind of all worked out. But the, the thing you learned about him right away – was uh, he didn't know me from anybody, but then you sit down with him for five hours and talk basketball like he's your best friend, you know. And anybody that's been around him, 
Uh, if I've had friends in town, I'll tell you a story. I had a, a buddy in town who's a Florida State fan. We ran into him, and he sat there and talked to him about Jimbo Fisher for three hours. And my buddy left and was like, did that just happen? You know, like, yeah. Yeah. why did this guy spend so much time with me? And he's just a genuinely – Terrific person. Uh, I think whenever <clears throat> he's struggling, we're all struggling with him because, you know, we know how hard he works and how good of a guy he is and how bad he wants to win a, bring a national championship to West Virginia. So, that you know, back to my point, when guys aren't buying in and playing hard and playing yeah. with enthusiasm and heart, I know it's eating him uh, up. And I, heard so. and I know it eats up our, our uh, you know, us who are watching it. Ten, so. years, ten years I was with him here at WVU. Ten years. Ten. I was with him ten years. So that means I met him thirteen yeah, you, yeah, years you, ago, yeah, fourteen years ago. Be, wow. Yeah, before, yeah, time you, flies. You know him for a long time. But I've known Hugs for forty years before, our, before I worked for him here. We were we were buddies forty years ago. Matter of fact, I was a student host at the University of Maryland when he visited. Maryland for really his official visit. Let's skip that story too. Yeah, we'll skip that. We'll skip that yeah. story too. Probably a pretty good idea. <laughs> uh, but the ten years with Hugs, he's so thorough and has a mind that doesn't stop working about the game and a game plan and a strategy how to beat somebody. For I'll give you one example, a couple examples. Each assistant coach, Coach Harrison, Coach Martin, and myself, we were the three full-time coaches when I coached here. And when I left, Coach Everhart came in. Mm -hmm. And now when Jared Calhoun came in or left, to go to young, uh, Fairmont. And then Ronnie. That's when Ronnie came in. So anyway, we would we he would we would be assigned scouting assignments, and for example, I had I was back in the Big East days. One of my scouts every year was Providence College. And the first year I have Providence College, I go in, and Hugs sits down. With each coach, each, he sits down with the coach that has the scout. He doesn't bring everybody in, just just you and him. He's asked me about Providence College. So I give him everything. He goes, Billy, he said, you got that 1-3-1? When we, when we played 1-3-1 one, one against them, we had 1-3-1 one, one defense against them two years ago. What did they run against us? And I'm sitting there going like, Coach, I'll have to go back and pull that up. I, haven't, I didn't look at that two years ago. He says, well, I need to know what they ran against us. That's how thorough he is. Yeah. He doesn't forget nothing. His mind doesn't forget certain plays and games, and his mind is crazy. Yeah. Amazing. <clears throat> what impresses me, too, is like when you're in practice and you're watching him, he doesn't miss anything. Nothing like if, if a guy doesn't box out and it's on the other end of the floor, he sees it, or a guy doesn't set a screen or brush it off a screen or cut the right way, or he doesn't miss anything. I mean, the attention to detail. And right. I, I try to preach that to my guys, like, you don't understand on that level, like, the attention to detail is incredible. And, and that's why he's so great, I think, you know, because he holds them accountable. Um, his, his system's not the most complicated system in the world. Right. Because he wants them to play. But the system and the defensive system and the, the philosophy, you better do it the right way 100% of the time. Or he's going to see it, and he's oh, going to call did. you out. There's that's no like, doubt about it. That's, that's like that's like a today's practice. I'll give you I'll give you an example. At practice today, he was trying to go over a zone offense that we run, and he had the big guys 
at one end of the floor and the guards and the perimeter guys at the other end. He's down with the big guys. He's working with the big guys. Trying to get them to understand what he wants. So they would run it. He goes, nope, stop it, stop, stop. He'd go out there and he'd show them. And then he'd do it again. Stop, stop, stop. For like 15 minutes. So now he brings the guards down and everybody's, now we go five on five. And he's watching. And he goes, they run the front, stop, stop, stop. And he's not even looking at what he's looking at, he's, but he saw all five guys. He said, fellas, just understand something. This will not work if one guy of the five does not do his job correctly, it will not work. And he pointed out, I can't remember who it was, and the guy was over in the corner. Mm -hmm. I'm going like, hold on a second. How did he see that guy? Yeah. And what happened, that guy had moved up three steps up. He says, you can't be up there. You got to be down in the corner for this to work. He sees everything. It's unbelievable. He does. He's the best. He needs to be in the Hall of Fame. It's about he, time. He will, he will it's be. about time, though. That's going to happen. That'll definitely happen. Uh, we got five minutes. We got five minutes until <clears throat> I got to change guests here. So we're going to wrap it up with this. Put a little pressure on you. All right. Tomorrow night, Kansas State, WVU. Prediction? I haven't really thought about it because we're playing tomorrow night. I'm not going to ask you that. Cause yeah. Because I, I know what you're going to say uh, about that one. I got faith in the bear. I think we're going to go out there and get one. You know what? I, do I think too. we're getting closer and closer and closer. I'm going to go on record right now. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah, I think, I think he's got their attention and... They better win tomorrow. Yeah, they better win. Yeah. Now, my next question, I'm, I'm going to look ahead. So now, we've got Saturday at home against Oklahoma State. I say we get two wins this week. Kansas State tomorrow night, come home against Oklahoma State Saturday, students, win that. Students are back, right? Students are back. Let's do it. Let's I think, do it. Yeah, I think I think he's got their attention. You know he's going to be prepared for tomorrow. He always outcoaches that guy. He usually has. He always does. And I mean, Bruce, it's not even. I mean, Bruce, he's a good coach, but. Oh, Bruce Weber could coach. I'd like to see the record. I said to everybody today, I think tomorrow's winner is the first team that gets to 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. They can't score, and we can't score. Yeah. To be true. All right, uh, I'll be back in a five five minutes or so. Bring my next guest on. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. You got it. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start the second half hour. I've got uh, Coach Joe Schmiedel here from University High School. That's playing the Morgantown guys tomorrow. Joe. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having thanks, us. Thanks for coming in. Your lovely wife's here, right? Oh, she's here. Hey. I thought I saw you walk in with her. How was your Christmas? Oh, yeah, you guys were down in Myrtle Beach, right? Huh? Mer Myrtle Beach? Tell me a little bit about Myrtle Beach and your, uh, your, your Christmas tournament that you went down there for. I was... Uh it was a great experience, really. Just right. On, an honor to even be invited down there, and uh, got to play some really good competition. Uh, right. I thought we performed pretty well. Uh, I thought a little better than I anticipated. Uh, competition was great. Uh, I think the kids had a great time. It's a little rough, you know, getting up and driving down there on Christmas Day and having right. to play you the left, day you after. Left on Christmas Day. Left on Christmas Day. Wow. Don't like. Don't like. 
playing a game the day after I don't get to practice. But Wow. But uh, it was great. They fed us great. Of course, if, if you feed the kids great, they don't care about anything else. How long did it take you to drive there? About eight and a half. Eight and a half hours? Yeah. And you drove, like, cars for parents? Everybody took their cars, Everybody yeah. Everybody took their car out? Yep. A lot of parents went and stayed. Right. You know, we got to stay all at the same place. And uh, great facilities, you know, got to play in the convention center. And, um, had a real nice crowd for the first game against Cox right. Mill. That right. was It was a great time. Did you uh, make the drive in one day? Oh, yeah. So yep. you drove the entire day. Yep. And your first game was on the? 26th. Oh, you played the next day. Played the next day at 7 o'clock. Wow. Yeah. So we, we did get to have a shoot-around the day of the say, game. You got a shoot-around? Yeah, but we uh, didn't get to practice the day before. That's hard. Practiced at 6.30 on Christmas Eve in the morning, 6.30 in the morning. Really? Yeah. Now, did you win that game? We did not. On the 26th? We lost. Lost that game. Lost 92-82. 92-82, yep. 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 We're down, I think we're down four, and we're shooting a free throw now with a minute the, to is go. Is that the team, the, the kids going to Duke? Yes, Wendell Moore. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yep. Yeah. They're good. How good's that kid? He's pretty good. What position does he play? Wherever he wants. Really? <laughs> How tall is he? I'd say he's a legit 6'5". Six five. He, six he five wasn't 6'6". Six six. Yeah. Long, though. Athletic. Very long. Very athletic, yeah. Made it look easy. Yeah. Had 35 points, and you'd have thought he had 15. Those, those guys, those pros, in the, in the years I've been able to coach, for the 40 years, I've had 27 guys that I've been associated with that went to the NBA. Those guys just make everything look effortless. Yeah. I mean, they're just like you're going like, they're not even trying. Well, they don't have to. They don't. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So that doesn't surprise me. I want to uh, ask you about your team, uh, what your record is right now, and start from however you want to do. You can go from your freshman class up or senior class down, okay. however you want to do it. I want you to tell me about each player. Talk about each one of your players. Tell me a little bit about them, what each player does for you. Uh, and then at the end of that, I want to find out what guys ran a suicide today for me. Because I, I, I had a, a bet with University High basketball team. Uh, at the end of their practice, I asked them, Anybody that thinks Alabama's going to win, go to this side of the court. Anybody that thinks Clemson's going to win, go this side of the court. So at the first question, at about 50-50, I said, this is for a suicide tomorrow after practice. So all of a sudden, the guys that went to Cle had Clemson, they went back to the Alabama side when I told them there was a suicide involved. They changed their mind. So I think we only had four, yep. four guys that thought Clemson was going to win. That's right. I want to go over that at the end. Okay. Now it starts with you. Go ahead. Want to talk about your staff first? Why don't we talk about before you get to the players? Talk about your assistant coaches <clears throat> and your staff. I got great assistants, old assistants. That's why they're good. That's right. <laughs> exactly. A lot of experience. Uh, you know, uh, John Ellis is right has helped me for the last four years, does a fantastic job. He's kind of our drill instructor, does a lot of our drills and right. de defensive type stuff. Uh, Coach Barry Sanders, who came and joined me from Preston uh, my second year. And, you know, I used to coach with Barry, and Barry's one of the most knowledgeable guys I know when Very it comes to X's and O's. Yes. I mean, he's fantastic and yes. irreplaceable, really. Yes. Very good. Uh, Bucky Forbes, who also used to coach at Preston, and uh, right. you know Bucky's a se Bucky's second year with me, and he's our, our JV coach and my assistant coach on varsity, and he's doing a great job with right. the JV kids. Sean Freeland, who used to be my JV coach, and he's going back to school and working for WVU now. Oh, really? So he he 
He said he could help me about 98% of the time. He didn't want to get paid for 98% if he couldn't be there 100%. So yeah, yeah. He, he helps both the JV and the varsity. Right. And I'm really happy that he's stayed involved because right. he's, he's excellent. You know, he, he, uh, he helped with John Beeline for a while. And oh, he learned okay. a lot of stuff off the B-line. Gotcha. He does yeah. okay. just very knowledgeable. Right. And uh, Andrew Boggs is my freshman coach, and he's okay. doing a real nice job with that. Right. Uh, as far as the kids go, the team goes, uh, we're 7-2 now. 7 and Just two. like Morgantown High. Go ahead. A lot of similarities between now, the two teams. 7-2, are you ranked in well, the state of West Virginia? Well, we are. We're ranked number two in the AP poll that just came out. And You're I number two in the and state. Morgantown, I think, is number four. So Morgantown's four. Yeah, which means nothing at this time no, of year. Nothing. Nobody cares. But two versus four tomorrow night, then. Two versus four. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, you should win, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that easy. That's, uh, that's, what all of, that's what all the crazy fans, fans, I said. Nothing knows anything about basketball. Right, right. Yeah. Neither oh. do the people voting on those rankings, yeah, either, exactly. for the most part. Uh Players, I'll start with my, my freshman. I got a really nice freshman, uh, Aaron Forbes, who's the younger brother to Austin. Um, two completely different looking kids. When you look at him, Aaron's 6'3", 195, 200 pound kid that's right. uh, got, got great feet. He's got good hands, finishes around the basket well with either hand. He's just very agile for his size. And uh, how big is he? Six three, one ninety five. Got you. Okay. And he's he's just going to get better. I mean, as as the season goes on, he's he's coming off a knee injury. He hurt the end of February last year. Last year he had an ACL reconstruction. So, right. You know that's still kind of between his ears a little bit. But the more comfortable he gets with that, the better he's going to be. Right. Ryan Neisler is the only sophomore I have. He starts for me. Real athletic kid. Jumps out of the gym. Uh, a lot better perimeter shooter than people give him credit for. And, you know, he's he's going to improve as the season goes on, too. He does a lot of good things, blocks a lot of shots, gets a lot of rebounds. Right. Doesn't get a lot of credit for anything, but he should. Right. Uh, my junior class is our class that's loaded. Uh, Matheny, everybody knows about Matheny and McClurg. Uh, Mike Mombay's 6'6 six, six kid in the middle. He's getting getting better. Right. Not anywhere near his potential yet, but he'll get there. When I saw you guys in the Morgantown Classic that before Christmas, and I've seen you guys in a couple practices, if there's anybody in the state of West Virginia that has a better backcourt than you, I want to see those. I want to see that backcourt. <laughs> now, there might be a player or two in the state of West Virginia as good as CJ. KJ. KJ, I'm sorry. KJ and Matheny. They might be as good or maybe better, but there can't be, there can't be a backcourt with both guards better than than your two. I don't think there can be. Probably not going to find any that work any harder than they do yeah. either. I mean, they they work their tail off. They're good. They're tough. Yeah. And yeah. they're tough. And they can both shoot the ball like crazy. Yeah. I mean, they can shoot like crazy. Shoot it off the bounce or catch oh. and shoot. Yeah, which is important. And both They can both take it to the hole. And they're, they're just really hard to defend for a lot of people. I can't believe in my mind how much brother KJ got from the end of your season when you guys got beat in the state tournament. From then until now, my mind is boggled how good that kid got. He was a lot better last year than people knew. Wow. I mean, he was good. He wasn't, he wasn't near as good as he is now, but he was pretty good. He just didn't have an opportunity to show it because he had Ridgeway and Forbes and Bailey and, I mean, right. you know. I right, mean, you had it, a good, yeah. You know, it was. Right. But he's worked hard and he's lifted. He's, he's gained a lot of strength. Right. And, uh, I think that's given him a lot of the confidence 
you know, and he's, he's always been a great shooter. Right. And, I mean, he's, he's still got to mature. You know, we, we've, we've got room to grow, trust me. Now, is he, is he being early recruited by – Is he, are some schools looking at him right now? A, a few are, but not near as no. many as should be. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, it, it'll happen. They'll find out about him. Yes, yeah. But he's, yeah. So he's got – a, a couple of entries. Yeah, he's got a couple full offers. Does yeah, he? Yeah. Oh, does he yeah, really? Yeah, he does, yeah. Good. Um, I think he'll get some mid-major type stuff here pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, I it's, think he's pretty damn good. Yeah. You know, he's about 6'3". He's real athletic and got a great great jumper and ha handles the ball well. He'll, he's got to get a little better at that. But he, but he will because he'll work at it. So right. it's just a matter of time. And then uh, this little guy that you got, he's pretty good too, isn't he? Matheny? This guy named Matheny. He's not bad. Pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. I got a no trade clause on him. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't let that guy go very <laughs> far away. I, I, I'd make. I'd be very close to where he is at all times. Yeah. He's tough. He's pretty damn good. He's got his priorities let's tell, let's right tell too. Everybody, I mean, if you don't want to talk about him, I will. I'll let you talk about him because I don't want. I don't want him to think you know I, he's I, that good. I, as a coach. Yeah. As a coach, you, coaches don't really want to talk about it. Yeah, I'll let you talk. Especially when they're sitting here. It's your show. Well, I'll say this to you. I watched you guys a lot last year. And he was a sophomore last year. And I saw him in a few AAU tournaments when I was still working for WVU. Coach Everhart. Had a problems with his back during an open recruiting period, and they had to put me in an emergency situation. They checked with the NCAA, and they had me go out to a couple AAU events because Coach Everhart couldn't go. And I saw him as at an AAU event. And I'm going like, wow, this little sucker is pretty damn good, pretty doggone good, and. So now I come back, I watch you guys. I like him for a few reasons. Number one, and I'll say this, he's sitting right here. I can say it. Never lose your toughness, because your toughness, your toughness makes you pretty special. A lot of guys can play a lot of guys have a lot of skill, can shoot, pass, dribble. A lot of guys don't have that grit or the toughness that you have. Never lose that. That makes you special. And then the second thing is, you obviously, you have to be a gym rat because I've never seen a guy that could shoot the ball that hasn't been a gym rat during his life. You, you put up all kinds of shots since you've been a young kid, haven't you? I know you have, there's no doubt in my mind. So don't stop being a gym rat. Keep getting as many shots up as you can. Get in the gym and stay in the gym all the time. Continue that. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is this. You have a great ability to change speeds. You go from slow to fast, fast to slow, as well as a lot of high school kids I've ever seen. And continue to do that. Keep changing speeds. Because when you, you're all of a sudden going like this, then boom. You go. That's hard. That's hard to guard. Oh, he snuck. The other KJ. He just snuck in on me. He got a oh, haircut. I got. Yeah, you got them all cut, didn't you? He didn't get a haircut. He got them all cut. That's right. Everybody oh. always asks me if I got a haircut. I said no. I didn't get a haircut. I got them all cut. Looks good. Uh, now I can talk a little bit about you too. Have you been here the whole time? Oh, you have. Well. I think I did talk about you a little bit. You guys are as good as I've seen. 
has a backcourt in West Virginia. And uh, what, what happens as a player, other teams scout both of you. And just like Morgantown's going to have a, they know you guys from forever. But as you to play other people, you're both going to have a target on your back. You're going to be, obviously, they say we're going to beat University High. Nothing against your other players because you can't do it with the two of you by yourselves. But they're all going to really focus in on you guys. You both have to continue your unselfish ways. Because you're both very unselfish. Sometimes, as you get pretty good, you have a ten sometimes you have a tendency to get a little selfish and, and worry a little bit more about yourself than you do about the team. I don't think that's going to happen with you guys, but you've got to think about that. You're still playing no matter no matter what you do. You're still playing for University High School. You're not playing for yourself. You're not winning the game because of you. You're winning it because of everybody involved. Coaches, players, managers, everybody. And I'll tell both of you this, that I have you. Do things the right way, which I know you guys do. Do things the right way. And the basketball gods, which I thoroughly, thoroughly believe in, my wife gets tired of me talking about it. 42 years I've been married with that girl. 42 years, long time. It's a long time. She had ovarian cancer, leukemia. She beats ovarian cancer, leukemia. She tells everybody, ovarian cancer and leukemia that was just a walk in the park. Compared to being married to you. should to be you. married to Billy Hahn for 42 <laughs> years. That's I had a feeling you were going to say that. But back to the basketball gods. The basketball gods are always watching you. And if the basketball gods see you cheating the game and being lazy with the game and not working on your game, Basketball gods will bite you. And the basketball gods will take away from you. Not only with basketball, but let's say you're walking down the street. I told this to all my players. And there's a somebody threw a a bottle or a can out the window of a car. And you're walking down the street and you see that can. You don't have to pick that can up. But the right thing to do is probably pick that can up. And if you do that and you do things the right way, good things will happen to you. I've been fired twice as a head coach. Been through cancer with my wife. Been through a lot of stuff. The basketball gods have always taken care of me. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I got a long ways to go. I do a lot of bad things to this day. Ask my wife. <laughs> but anyway, keep doing things the right way. Great things are going to happen to you and your team. And thanks for coming out tonight. What else do we want to talk about? What time is it? Anybody know? 52? Well, we got some minutes. We got some good time. <coughs> We're still good to go, right? All right, good. Yeah, you know, my first kid off the bench normally is Kyle Smith. Go ahead. Little guy, tough guy. Go ahead. The enforcer. He's the enforcer? 5'9". Five 5'9". Nine. Five the enforcer. Nine. I got you. How about it's that? tough. Really? Love him. Does all the little things. Go ahead. Boxes out great. Right. Just does all, all the things that you need. You just, when we need a spark, that's why I don't start him. Right. He could start. Right. But 
He gives us that energy coming off the bench. Gotcha, what you need. Yeah. Uh, Rodney Bucklew, senior this year, right. doing a great job for us. He's Rodney's probably averaging 10 or 12 points a game and probably seven or eight rebounds a game. Right. Can shoot the three. Doesn't shoot it a lot. Shoots it when he needs to. He's a lot right. like Neisler. Um, just does a great job for us, especially on the offensive glass. Uh, you know, and that's... Is that's, that pretty much it? That's pretty much it. Okay, now, what do I expect and what do our listeners and viewers, when they come out to the game tomorrow night at 7.30, what should everybody expect to see on your side and on Morgantown's side? Give me a little game plan. Well, not the game plan, but what we're going to yeah. see. Well, you're going to see a lot of people. Yeah. For one, uh, yeah. I think it'll be packed. Seems like the first game every year, it's always the most packed. crowded. It's right. always the most crowded for that first game. Everybody wants to see right. you know, who the best team is. Uh, it doesn't matter who the best team is tomorrow. It matters who the best team is on March 16th. Right. But you're going to see two, two very good basketball teams, two of the top programs in the state of West Virginia. Right. Uh, obviously, have a lot of respect for Coach Tallman and, right. and you know their team. I mean, defensively, they're going to be – Probably the best we see all year. They always are. Uh, you know, hopefully we can be patient enough and disciplined enough on offense. And we're very young. You know, I'm hoping that that doesn't have too much of an impact on the game. I hope our young guys can can hold things together. And, right. you know, the patience part of it concerns me a little bit. I think if we can be patient and disciplined enough to take the best shot, not just a good shot. Right. Uh, we have a lot a lot better chance to be successful and you know obviously we're going to have to do a great job on the boards because they're a lot bigger than we are they're, 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 they have size advantage yeah, they're they're very big very long you right. know it's hard to simulate that in practice you know we have a hard time our you know our second team guys they uh they're not real long so we probably get away with a lot of things in practice that we're not going to be able to get away with in the games that that concerns right. me some too but i think the kids will be focused i know they'll play hard and uh, even though we're young, I don't think we're inexperienced. If right, that makes right. sense. Yeah, so. I, exactly. This is the way I see it. Tell me if I'm wrong. You guys and your team seems like to play. If you could get in the 80s every game, you'd be happy. I think Morgantown, if they get to, to 60, they're happy. I see two teams that are different. Mm -hmm. Their temple compared to your temple is different. I think you guys want to play faster than them. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's the way that's the way I see it. I think the rebounding is going to be big tomorrow night. They have a size advantage on you. I think the team that whoever controls the boards, who doesn't give runouts, that I can look at those two things at the end of the game, and that'll be that'll declare who the winner is. I think turnovers is going to be a big yes, you know, and uh, well, the turnovers are going to cause the runouts. Yeah, you get those live ball turnovers, okay? Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it can be a backbreaker. You know, I, we just got to be home, smart. Home court advantage. I, I, I don't believe in that. You don't believe that? Not, not between these two teams. There's not really a home court, is there? It's weird. Both gyms are kind of similar. Yeah. And it's not like it used to be back when I played. You know, right. every gym was different. Right. But I think our kids have played on that floor enough. Their kids right. have played on our right. floor enough. And that's, you know, they have just as many people there as we do. And, and you look throughout the history, at least as long as I've been there, it's it's just a toss-up almost every time. You just never know. Whoever plays the best, I think, will win. Gotcha. Well, thanks for coming out tonight. I suggest that everybody go see these fine high school teams tomorrow night. Tip-off is at 730 at Morgantown High School. Get there early to get a seat. Is it sold out yet? No, I don't know if it is or not. They don't tell people, and I'm not important enough to, I, I, I to know you. that kind of you. stuff. 
Good luck to the University High people. Good luck to Morgantown High people. They all left. But thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. And I'm going to be out to see you guys a lot. I love your team. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Hey, people, we'll be back uh, next week. And we'll have another show. And uh, I'm going to bring in – next week I will bring in uh, – the assistant coach from West Virginia that always has the next scout. And next week, I will have Coach Martin on as we will talk about the University of Texas. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.